This is tough. I'm not gonna lie, this is tough. With all the weight I have on me, with everything I'm carrying, with all the gear on, I'm sweating so much. It's all uphill. It's probably not smart to do without water. Welcome back. Here we go again on another video. And today is gonna be a little bit different than previous videos. A little more nerdy, maybe not as interesting to most people, but <laughs> we're still doing something that I think is interesting. We're gonna go check out some of the physical geography <laughs> of Marin County out here. Uh, specifically pertaining to some of the natural disasters that threaten us in this area. So I'm talking about earthquakes, fault lines, landslides. We're gonna go check out some of these spots uh, that can kind of tell us a bit more about these natural disasters and show us how these things work. As usual, we'll see what happens. And hopefully it's mildly interesting. going to check out some physical geography of the Bay Area people. I'm a geography nerd. Maybe nobody else cares about this stuff, but we're going to go look at the San Andreas Fault. You know, everyone out here knows about the big one, the big earthquake that is inevitably coming. We just don't know when. It's overdue, actually. What better idea than to go to the fault itself? <laughs> Wow, this place is beautiful. I had to interrupt myself because this is just amazing. Every time there's moss hanging off trees, I'm just stunned. Look at this. What a little paradise. So I'll just park right in here. What an absolutely gorgeous place. I'm telling you, every time I think I've been everywhere out here, I stumble upon another place that's just like a little paradise. I mean, I can't even believe what I'm looking at here. But getting back to the reason why we're out here, we are very close to the San Andreas Fault and we're gonna go and walk to a little place right, right out here somewhere called the Earthquake Trail. And we are now in the San Andreas Fault Zone, where the North American and Pacific Continental Plates are colliding against each other. Most of California really is dominated and controlled by the San Andreas Fault, right? It is the dominant fault in the state. It is the largest and most continuous uh, fault in the state. Um, it is the primary plate tectonic boundary between two massive tectonic plates, the Pacific Plate on the west generally and the North American Plate on the east. And that contact, that point of intersection of those two plates is one of grinding and pushing and pulling uh, and it creates a lot of topography in uh, in its wake and so the shape of the of the state from the uplifted cliffs on the coast to the uh, huge antelope valley in southern california to the sierra nevada uh, in the central eastern portion of the state are all controlled predominantly by this 
pushing and deformation along the San Andreas. The main thing that we know about the San Andreas Fault is that it has hosted large earthquakes in the past, and we have every reason to believe that it will continue to host large earthquakes in the future. The, we have been in our conversation focusing on the San Andreas Fault. It is not the only source of a damaging and significant earthquake in California. There are many other faults that pose a danger. Well, some of the best things you can do is like we're doing right now, talk about it as a reality. It is going to happen. It has happened in the past. We can talk about it and take away some of this stigma and fear. You can download uh, earthquake early warning apps to your phone. Here in the state of California, we have free early warning apps that you can download for iPhone. It's called the MyShake app. Uh, if you have an Android phone, it is already enabled in there. Just make sure that your location services are on. And uh, it will give you, when there is a significant, moderate to significant earthquake in the state, you'll get uh, hopefully anywhere from five to 10 to 30, maybe even 40 seconds of warning before strong shaking arrives to you. And it gives you little time that can make a big difference. So earthquakes happen when the tectonic plates slip and release seismic energy. That's what causes the earthquakes. This is a really fascinating example to me. I know we're just looking at a fence here, but to understand what this fence represents is pretty amazing. One of the most devastating earthquakes in California in, in recent history was the 1906 earthquake that absolutely leveled San Francisco. The San Andreas Fault ruptured and slipped, causing a huge amount of seismic energy to release. Point Reyes itself may have jumped 20 feet and moved 20 feet just during that quake, and it all happened in under a minute. This fence is one remainder from that time, and it shows you where the fence split and the ground moved. So you can see that this fence split by 16 feet and the ground moved here that much in under a minute during that earthquake because of the tension released and un under the slippage of the fault line. What a beautiful, peaceful place with a potentially devastating power right underneath our feet here. Very cool. We're not done yet. We're going to another spot and we're gonna ride the bike back down into Southern Marin to see another hazard here, a physical geography hazard that we live with, and that would be landslides. So we're gonna go down and try to find what I think of as an interesting spot. I've never been there before, but we're gonna try to find it. We're gonna have to ride down a ways and then hike in to try to find this landslide uh, site. open fields. I love this type of area. I passed it so far. All right, so I'm gonna go back. Okay, I'm here at the trailhead finally, and we are going to hike up into the hills to see hopefully some of the marks on the landscape that landslides have made. And also, I'm gonna try to find a station uh, that the US Geological Survey has out here uh, to monitor some of what's going on uh, on these hillsides and in the ground here. <sighs> the 
This is tough. I'm not gonna lie, this is tough. With all the weight I have on me, with everything I'm carrying, with all the gear on, I'm sweating so much. It's all uphill. It's probably not smart to do without water. But I really wanna show you all this spot and I wanna see if we can find it. Well, the adventure is real now. I was gonna try to get us footage of the hillsides that are scarred by landslides out here and that are being monitored by the USGS. So I put up the drone to try to get over there quicker uh, to get some footage of it. Uh, and all of a sudden, the drone's up in the air out there, everything's normal, and then the GPS uh, signal for the drone just completely drops. Uh, the remote controller loses connection with it, and the drone's gone. It just took off on its own. It landed by itself over a bunch of forest. Um, so that is an unexpected and unfortunate turn of events here. I'm sorry that I uh, can't show you all this landslide stuff. Maybe I'll come out here again. Uh, but right now I'm going to try and see if I can remedy this, see if I can maybe get a connection hit on the controller. I don't know, but it, it seems like it's gone. Uh, let's see what happens, though. Ah, <laughs> I got it. It was still up there. I ran up these hills and it connected to the controller just at the last second and I got it over here. I'm going to land it. I'm going to land it. All right, I'm gonna go up a little more, see if I can get to a clearing. So this area is a monitoring site where the USGS has been collecting landslide data since 2010. And even in this footage, you can see what I believe is scarring from debris flows. Landslides pose a threat here in the Bay Area and usually occur after intense rainfall. On these hills, the USGS has data loggers, which monitor soil water content and groundwater pressure. The goal is to identify thresholds for landslides and debris flows. The information being gathered here is being used to develop a warning system with the National Weather Service. All right, that's as far as I'm going today without water. Um, I'm sorry you couldn't see more of the scarring on the landscape, but hopefully you at least got an idea of how hilly this terrain is. Anyway, not quite as planned today, <laughs> at least the second part, <laughs> but it was still great. I really liked exploring today and learning and, uh, you know, got the drone back, so that's the good news. And now I'm gonna head back to the bike and try to go find some water somewhere. Well, thank you so much for watching again. Sorry this one kind of derailed a little bit, but that's what happens when you're out on a bike, adventuring around, exploring. But thanks again, more to come as always.